Now to that bombshell lawsuit against the New York City Ballet. The suit was filed by 19-year-old ballerina Alexandra Waterbury, a former student at the New York City School of American Ballet. Somebody has to take responsibility for something. Alex Waterbury is a ballet dancer and model who made headlines in 2018 for suing the New York City Ballet. She says that her boyfriend, a principal dancer, had secretly taken explicit photos and videos of her and was sharing them with multiple people affiliated with the company. She says the company fosters a fraternity-like atmosphere that isn't safe for female dancers. They tried to dismiss this as a personal matter. It's not personal. Like, it's very much on you and the culture of your institution, and it's not just me. Like, how many other women? I'm Amanda Knox, and having had the most private details of my own life exposed to the world, I want to know how women today are confronting a culture of shame. I'm here in New York City to meet with Alex Waterbury. I'm hoping to learn from Alex what it's been like to uncover the dark underbelly of a beloved institution by asserting her rights and her dignity and rocking its foundations in the process. Hello. Hi. Hi. You look great. So what, what do we have all here? These are just like point shoes. People do a bunch of weird stuff to their shoes. Like I break mine. For luck? Uh, no, it, it makes your foot look better. Oh. Like, everybody wants to have good feet. What is it about ballet that speaks to you? Like, what does it represent for you? Um, it was like kind of bullied in middle school, and so I would go to dance every day, like an hour away with different people. Mm -hmm. And everyone was just like friendly, and like we had fun. And so it was just kind of like a way to like balance like school and like a social life. So what was it like getting accepted to the School of American Ballet in New York City? Like a dream come true. I was like 15. It's probably like the best school in the country for dance. It's definitely like the hardest to get into. was like so overwhelming and just like unreal at the time. When was it that you met Chase? So the last year I was there, a donor from the company, he brought me to City Ballet's gala in the fall and I ran into Chase there and then he ended up writing me on Facebook like four days later asking me to go on a date. Chase was a principal dancer. What does that mean? So it means he's like the highest rank in the company. He got there when he was like 23, which is kind of crazy. You know, being a 19 year old that grew up watching him since I was 11, I was like kind of like blown away. So we started dating and we dated for like two years. What was your relationship like? I mean, in the beginning, everything was like great and fine and he was telling me like, I love you and I care about you. And there were times when like you, I genuinely felt that he did. I don't know when it got so bad, but it was kind of like an abusive relationship in a way, like emotionally and like psychologically. And I think he coped in a lot of unhealthy ways. Like a lot of our fights would happen because he was like very drunk. Mm -hmm. And like, there were a few nights where it did get physical and I mean, it doesn't justify it, but I think a lot of the things that happened in my case happened while he was under like some type of influence. So when did you find out that Chase had been secretly videotaping you and photographing you in explicit and intimate moments? So one night he had to be up really early to go to the airport, I think at like four. So I woke up at like 8 a.m. and I went on the laptop, which he gave me the password to. And you know how like on a Mac, your iMessages will sync? Sure. So everything just started syncing. And like the text messages were like so vulgar. Who is he sending these messages to? Other dancers that he worked with. And then one donor slash like 
board member. What were some of the messages that you read? They wanted to tie girls up and abuse them like farm animals. And like the conversations were like disgusting, but also some of them were just like really heartbreaking. And then I found like all the photos of me and was just like, is there anything else? Like, I don't know. It was so much. How did that hit you? Um, so I think, sorry. Yeah. Um, I think I've kind of spent my whole life trying to, you know, be successful and protect myself. And even in modeling, I tell people at photo shoots, like, I'm not shooting, like, nude or something. And for someone who I cared about so much, and um, he was, like, my first real boyfriend, you know? I was 18, turning 19. Like... I think I walked around for like three or four days just in complete shock. He wasn't in the city, he was gone for work. And I was just like alone. Could you ever imagine that Chase would do something like that? No, I didn't think that he hated me that much. I didn't think that any of the guys involved in this like hated me that much. Sure, Chase and I fought, but I don't see how that would like translate into this. And obviously there are still people sending their children to a place that like literally creates this environment. Like every single person that had received photos of me or took photos of their wives or took photos of their girlfriends and sent them in these like group texts, they were all students at the School of American Ballet at one point. Because it wasn't just you that there were images of in those messages. No, there were tons of girls. And it's clear in the conversations that like None of us knew. Like, the guys literally talk about how we could be pissed off if we found out. Now to that bombshell lawsuit against the New York City Ballet. A ballerina is claiming a male dancer secretly took and shared intimate photos of her, also accusing the ballet of allowing male dancers to behave badly without consequence. For these men to think that they could degrade me and everything that I am was disgusting, and it's wrong, and it's not fair. What was the New York City Ballet's response to everything? They tried to dismiss this as a personal matter, and I'm like, your employees, your donors, your board members, and like every other person who's gotten the pictures were your students. Like, it gets to a point where it's not personal. Also, like, it's not just me. Like, how many other women? The organization vehemently denies the allegations that the company has condoned, encouraged, or fostered the kind of activity that Mr. Finlay and the others named have participated in. But Alex's case comes on the heels of monumental allegations against former director Peter Martins. Martins retired after numerous accusations of sexual harassment and physical assault though an investigation initiated by the company was unable to corroborate the claims. Alex's suit also names other instances of abuse, violence, and even rape that the New York City Ballet previously allowed to happen. So I'm hoping that like they don't get away with this, but at the same time, like I don't need the legal system to tell me what happened to me was wrong. Do you think that if all of this hadn't been happening during the Me Too movement, that you might have reacted differently? I think the Me Too movement has definitely had like an impact on every decision that I make. I felt like encouraged, you know, maybe my voice would actually be heard and taken into consideration. I mean, I'm lucky that the attention that I got from it, like 99.9% .9 of it was positive. Like I seriously couldn't imagine what you went through. For me, like, it was surreal because it was like strangers were telling me who I was. Mm -hmm. But for you, it was your world and your people who were doing this to you. That's the thing, like, nobody tells you how to deal with any of this. And I was just like, along with being like angry and sad and embarrassed and everything else, I was terrified. 
Chase resigned in August of 2018. Two other dancers were later fired. So what is it that the New York City Ballet needs to do to make ballet safer for women? Um, I think the way that the institutions are structured, your voice actually would like hurt your career more than it would help it. Um, and I think that's why so many women didn't come forward that were involved in this, because they knew they would be putting everything at stake and kind of jeopardizing their jobs. I think just the whole culture is kind of like old. Here we are. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what does it feel like? Uh, I don't come here ever. Yeah. I avoid it yeah. at like all costs. I spent three years of my life like literally here. You know, looking at it now, I'm kind of like, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa. Yeah. That's the Goliath right there. <laughs> a place that's so concrete and so large, like, I shook it. And like, imagine if any of the other women had come forward, or if they do, like, they still can. It could change everything. If anything, this is a really good opportunity for traditional, insular institutions like the New York City Ballet to take a long, hard look at themselves. And I'm glad that Alex feels like there's a place for her voice in the world. <laughs>